Where am I going now? Yeah, look how filthy I am. Yeah, I went wrong way again. Some there should be over there. Plop and slop. Oh no! St. John. That's my foot. Deep in bab. My toenails are hurting though. Balls are in. Do you know what I mean, pal? Right, governor. Nice! Cumbria Way spans 73 miles, offering a scenic multi-day trek through Cumbria's diverse landscapes. This route connects the historic town of Ulverston up to Carlisle, travelling the full length of the Lake District National Park from south to north, showcasing stunning mountains, serene lakes, woodlands, valleys and tranquil riverside strolls. This is going to be a good one. I hope I've packed the blister plasters. Now then, welcome back to another video. So if you're new here, I'm Liam from Good Bloke Outdoors. I gone and bought me send another book. The Cumbria Way. This is gonna be my biggest adventure so far, my longest hike so far, and my backpack is rammed full of stuff to keep me going for five days. I'm absolutely buzzing to be out here. The weather ain't looking too great so far, but it's supposed to clear up later on. I just can't wait to bring you guys along with me. I'm sure it's gonna be eventful. I'm sure it's gonna be painful at times. It's gonna be a good one. And it's also, by the looks of things, gonna be a muddy one as well in places. And I tell you something, there's nothing like that fresh smell of cow shit first thing on a Monday morning. Just what you need to wake you up at the start of a big hike. Sweating, man, already. It's good to be out in the open again. Those little woodlands are proper muggy. And it's quite a warm day and there's not much breeze. Where am I going now? Over there, gotta be. Yeah, this first section, although there's a few signposts, the actual paths are a bit sketchy to spot. You just gotta look for ones that look well trodden and hope you're going in the right direction. And then obviously every now and then I check back on my map, on my phone, just to make sure I'm heading the right way. Now, other than in my tent, I actually have no idea where I'm gonna be sleeping tonight because I don't know how long I'm gonna be walking for. I'm not going to really go by time, I'm just going to go by daylight. In the last hour of daylight, I'm going to start looking for somewhere to pitch. That's the plan anyway. The first stage of this 
it'll take me to Coniston at least. I might even push on a little bit further. So you just gotta keep a look out. Cumbria way, roughly right down there. Little white arrow, that away. So the weather's not perfect, gotta be honest, but it's hard to plan a four, five, six day window where the weather's gonna be good for that many days in a row in autumn. And I've got to predict that two months in advance so that I can book the time off work. So it is what it is. My feet are piss wet through already. It's just this long grass as you're walking through and these aren't waterproof. Two of them on that. So I've been going exactly one hour from the start of the Cumbria Way. Well, 55 minutes. I think it's an hour and five minutes from the train station. And I've just seen the sign for St. John's Church. So we think just short of three mile. It'll be at least three mile from the train station anyway. So not bad going so far. Feel really good, nice and warmed up. I've got some nice little snacks. I made some trail mix with some, let me just navigate all this plop and slop. Oh, no. No, St. John. That's my foot. Deep in bab, proper deep in bab. Babbed it. What was I saying? So that's good going. We're nearly at St. John's Church. That's about 2.9 mile or so from the start of the Cumbria Way. So, oh yeah, trail mix. So for snacks, I've just made up five bags of trail mix. I've got chocolate raisins, just a generic trail mix packet from Poundland or some of our own bargains, one of them. And I got some wine gums, some little fizzy gum things, I don't know. I just bought a concoction of crisps. Crisps? I just bought a concoction of sweets. Weighed them all out, separated them into five bags. Literally never seen one like that before. It's obviously new, because this one's shat it. So for the first time, I've just seen two other people that are also doing the Cumbria way. They're heading for Coniston. I'm hoping to just get past Coniston by a few miles. Pressure's on now though, because I'm ahead of them. So I hope I'm going right way. <laughs> they'll be watching me. So that's the first time I've gone wrong so far. Luckily, it wasn't too far. I was basically the other side of this fence. There's like a little farm with a load of like scrap cars and that. And I just missed the turning. I was looking at the old cars, carried on walking. And I got to his gate and I thought, that's definitely not a gate for us to be going through. So I was like, yeah, you're all right. It looks like someone off making a murderer. So I went back and then about two minutes later, I noticed the little bit that I'd missed. So happy days, back on track now. All good. The fog's clearing up a little bit. There's still clouds in the sky, but I'm getting little glimpses of blue and a bit of sun poking through. Thank you. 
So we're now five miles in and two hours since the start of the trail. So I think today I'm hoping to do around 17, 18 miles, depending on how we get on with the daylight. The sun is due to set at half past six. So once it gets to like half five, then I'm gonna start looking for somewhere to pitch in that next hour or so. So if we're five mile in so far, two hours done, we're definitely on track. I'm gonna have a break at Beacon Town. That's about nine miles in. So that'll be roughly halfway of what I'm gonna to do today. I've just imported a standard GPX file that I found on Google into my footpath app. And that was a full length of the trail, 73 miles. But then what I've done is created new files and made my own sort of daily versions of that. Oh, sh shit. That's not what I like to see. I'm scared of cows, never mind bulls. If you're a snowflake, turn round. Anyway, Cumbria way. What's crack here like? Someone put some big Charlies down there. Big heifers. Gonna have to jump the gate again. This bull better not be about, I'm telling you. And this gate is, oh no, I can just open gate car clearly. <laughs> what a tit. Right, gate's open. Make sure it's closed. Otherwise that bull's gonna be running about. I'm staying near this wall. I reckon I can jump that wall before the bull gets to me. It might be bullshit anyway. There might not even be one in here. Oh mate, I thought these were sheep from up there, the cows. I'm gonna have to go awfully close to them on this path. Once one stands up, that's it, they'll all be up. So hopefully I can just make a nice swift pass. Oh, one's up already. Excuse me, pal. No waiting. Oh shit, yeah. Sorry, boss. Tell you what, that is a good sight to see. I'll zoom in. You can just see the Coniston Fells in the distance there. Ish. Hey, look at these. Look pretty fresh, don't they? So it had to happen at some point, but it started spitting. Not too bad though, to be fair. I'm not gonna put my waterproof on just yet because if I bang that on now, chances are that'll get me more wet than just a little bit of rain, because I'll be sweating. A little climb at the moment on tarmac as well. I think we've got about a mile or so till we get to Beacon Tarn, and then I'm gonna have a nice rest for a little bit. Well, we've got to Beacon Tarn, and this is the place where I'm gonna have my break and chill out for a bit. We are nine miles in so far, so I'm just gonna find somewhere where I can sit down, take my shoes off for a bit, and my pack off. 
It's still spitting a little bit, but it's not too bad. I'm just trying to avoid all this bog. Definitely slowing the progress down. Yeah, this looks like a good spot to me to chill out. Oh, it'd be nice to get tent up. <laughs> Far too early for that, eh, up. Someone's had a fire there, no need for that really. If you're gonna have a fire in a place like this, which I really don't advise anyway, at least get one of them little bush boxes and have it raised off at ground on a big stone or something. Although fires can be dangerous for spreading and that, especially in summer, that just makes it look like shit, do you know what I mean? Scorches the ground, scars it, and it'll take a while for that to grow back. Anyway, I'm gonna sit down, chill out, and get my pack off. Yes, look how filthy I am. Might give them a little wash. Bacon tan! Ready for the secret weapon? Battle bites. Yes, mate. Brownie, chocolate, peanut, caramel flavour. That'll be beautiful, that. Nice little protein bar. 15 grams of protein. And the more of these I eat, the lighter the pack is. I brought five of these. You like me flip flops? One pound, then. Well, I've had my break. Best get moving, Anna. This is why I don't have too many breaks, because once I'm sat down, I proper can't be asked. You gotta get back into the swing of it then, aren't you? But I sat there for a good 20 minutes, took my socks off, aired my feet out a little bit, the best I sort of can in these conditions. Ugh. Smart on me then. Now I'm just gonna follow Beacon Time round. We've got a couple more mile, and then I think we're gonna hit Coniston Water. And then that'll be the main sort of stretch then, right up until Coniston Village. And then I'm gonna find a shop or something so I can get some snacks. I've got some dehydrated meals in bag. So I'll be having some tea when I get back to the tent anyway, or when I get to the tent. Not back to it, because I've not been to it. But when I get tent up later on, that's when I'll cook my main meal of the day. Got a few summit to eat. Dehydrated meals from base camp food. Put the link on the screen. <coughs> Discount code. <coughs> anyway. Let's get round this town. It looks so eerie. Just with this low fog and mist. There's no wind. And apart from the odd little tweet or chirp. Just no sound. Nice. Yeah, definitely gonna head to a shop when I get to Coniston Village. I know there's a co-op because I've been in it before when I did the Coniston's Magnificent Seven hike. So I'll pop in there, get topped up on liquids as well. I probably should have filled my bottles up at Beacon Tarn, but I still had 750 mil left. I've got about four or 500 left now or something. So I've got enough, mate. Mate, 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 this GoPro man doesn't do it justice. You can just see the Coniston Fells in the distance. What a sight to see. If there's anything to give you that little extra push, it's some cracking mountains in distance.
God's first proper view of Coniston Water. Pretty cool, eh? Can he drowned here? Tell you something, I didn't realise how big Coniston water was. I knew it was big, but geez, it's taken some time to walk through. I've just come through what looks like a little campsite back there. A few tents pitched up, a few camper vans and that. I don't think we're too far off Coniston Village now. Well, it looks like the good weather's arriving. The end of my bloody day. Probably keep in there for night if you had to. It stinks though, so I won't. So I've just left Coniston. I was so tempted to go to one of them pubs and get a nice fish and chips, but it's half four now. So I thought, do I go in there and spend an extra hour chilling, having some nice grub, or do I just crack on? Because we've got a couple more hours of daylight left. I'm going with crack on. So I went to co-op, got some apple juice. Got some Lucas aid as well for a nice fizzy little boost to keep me going. So I ain't got a clue where I'm gonna camp still. I'm just gonna keep going for this next couple hours. Sunset's at half six, so we'll see what we can find. Yeah, I went wrong way again. Some there. Should be over there, but I'll get to it. I'll just keep going. One of them things, innit? Easy done when you're just on autopilot. Just focusing, walking thinking about stuff and that. Just enjoying being out here. There's a big old lump of a mountain behind me. Not sure what one that is. God knows. In about half a mile or so, we'll land back on the right track <laughs> and then just keep going. The time is five past five. So I'd say another hour at least of hiking and then we'll start looking for somewhere to pitch. Unless I find somewhere pretty epic, then obviously I'll pitch up. But because we're very low level paths throughout all this bit, throughout most of this hike, obviously it's going to have to be a bit of a stealthy one. Because you're not supposed to camp down here, but we'll be right. I only need a little corner just to tuck into, get my tent up, won't bother anyone. And I'll be packed up and gone before it's fully light tomorrow. Well, we're back on the tarmac again, on a road. After going through loads of woods back there, nice forest. But I feel like you can get more speed when you're on tarmac. Although it makes your feet burn like hell, but it does with mine anyway. So I just got to Tarn House. This, you know, it doesn't look bad for camping, especially around the other side. Obviously, as soon as I entered this place, there were loads of signs saying no camping. Don't worry about that. The opposite side, 
I can't see many people wandering around there at this time. There's an hour left of daylight. It's certainly a possibility. But then again, like I say, there's an hour left of daylight. Daylight time is hiking time. Tell you summer, what an absolutely beautiful evening for hiking. Actually got some blue skies up there. Sort of. I've just seen this little gate here. So I'm gonna jump over that and go pitch up somewhere near that little fell behind me. Right, so that's the path. It comes along here and that way somewhere. But let's be honest, it's quarter to seven now. No one's gonna be walking up here at this time. So I'm just gonna pitch directly in the middle of the path. But I'll be up at crack of dawn anyway, before any sunlight. And I'll have packed away before, hopefully anyone wants to use this path in the morning. Right, let's get this tent up. I'll bring you back when it's up. Right, that'll do. Sorry for quality, I've still got low light now. Leave no trace, as always. Path. Tell you what, I wish you could see these gaffs behind me. Wow. Not short for a bob or two around here, are there? Epic scenery. Swanky houses. I've just seen one of them. Citrons with. I don't know what model they are. Where you have to start it from front and you can twist it. How about that? Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. I am buzzing today. I'm buzzing because I'm feeling a lot better than I thought I would. I did over 20 miles yesterday. And with it being first day, you're just eager to get going, get as much as you can done. But then you might obviously come to regret that the following day, which I still might later on. But for now, I'm feeling like I've just started again. Fresh, ready to go. I've purposely not done any camping for the last couple of week at least. I think it was like three weeks since I last went to the Lake District with my mate, Sam. And it's just made me that bit more buzzing to get back out. Fire on that. It's a beast. Oh, mate. The mountains.
Yo. No, that is sick. I like that. Buzzing, nicely topped up on water. Just what you need, happy days. First little view of the Langdales there. So you've got Pike Stickle sort of behind them trees, I think. And then that looks like Harrison Stickle in the middle where I did a camp not so long ago. Cool. Footpath. Ain't nothing but a G, Frank. Cause ain't nothing but a G, bang, bang, bang. There we are, just amongst the clouds there, you can see Loft Crag, Piker Stickle, Harrison Stickle. We've now got a good view of Pavey Arc there, directly in the middle. Nice. We've got a load of low lying cloud, but then quite clear skies. So because I've not really had any breakfast, I had a little brunch bar in tent this morning. I'm going to have my second Battle Bites bar. This one is Jaffa Bake. Nice. 20 grams of protein. Decent. So you get uh, 240 calories. So not that much really, but 20 grams of protein will get me going. Oh shit. Cows. Oh lord. That's the new Dungeon Gill Hotel over there. And then I think we sort of follow it on this way towards the old Dungeon Gill. Before heading out of the Langdales and then up Stake Pass. And that is the car park I used when I did the Langdale Pikes. Stickle Gill.
so I just got to the old dungeon gill. See, this would have been a good opportunity to get a bit of brekkie, but I just looked online at their menu and they don't start serving food till half 12. So no breakfast there. Looks like a good rain over there where we're heading. Nice that way though. Sun's out over there. Proper out in mountain ends now. This place is epic. It's like we're in a big ball. Pretty sure I'm looking at Bofell directly in front of me. Tell by that little spiky bit on top and then the angled ascent. Not all ascents angled. You know what I mean. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. And if you don't, you don't. And if I don't know what I mean, I don't expect you to know what I mean. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean, pal? Like, right, governor. Long path this, though. And I think it's going to head up right up in the crack of that arse there up stake pass ah ankle wow sun's out it's nice to see sweating man this is a right path from langdales from dungeon gills all the way up to stake pass you keep thinking you're there but don't seem to get any closer. There we go, so that way up to S course and we're going that way up to Stake Pass. So I just had a little break down there, just while some were out, it's gone in now, but I took all my socks off, laid them out on a rock, let them dry out, let my feet air out a bit and dry my trainers off as well. I didn't do that enough yesterday, I don't think. So, I've had a nice rest, just in time to tackle this steak pass. Oh, I took my top off as well to dry my t-shirt out because my back was pierced wet. That's the problem with these frameless packs. Because you don't have any sort of gap between your back and the actual bag itself, you build up a lot of sweat. That's why I have my sit mat in between my back and my pack anyway let's get moving let's get nicely warmed up because i've cooled off again now right so i'm more or less at the top of the stake pass bit now just going over the bit before it starts descending but yeah a nice little workout that coming up there certainly gets the muscles going in the legs and from what i can remember from what I've seen of this next bit, this will get the knees going because it's pretty similar to that, just obviously going down, spiraling down or zigzagging down, should I say. Anyway, sorry for the audio up here, obviously it's a lot more windy. Now we're higher up. Wow, what a view. 
What a view, man. This is what we're doing it for. Come out here to see that. Nice! Right, so I'm more or less at the bottom of the stake pass zigzags and not too bad on the knees actually, my knees feel alright my toenails are hurting though it feels like have you ever cut your fingernails too short i'm sure you must have you need to get that feeling when you pull skin back like that on that nail oh that's what my toes feel like not good and it's just started raining again but same as yesterday it's not bad enough for me to start putting my waterproofs on i'm just going to see how it goes hopefully it'll pass Well, the inevitable happened. I ended up having to put waterproof on because rain started coming down. And now I've got it on. Yeah, it is still raining actually. I was gonna say it stopped, but it's certainly slowed down back to a little drizzle. But I'll just keep it on for now. This weather's certainly taking a turn for the worse. It's been non-stop raining for the last hour or so. Luckily I'm walking through a little bit of a woodland. So we get a bit of protection from leaves and that at the moment. Right, so I've just passed through Rothway. I went to the Flock Inn, I think it's called, like a tea room sort of cafe thing. Cash only mate, oh my days. I had a scabby fiver in my own bag, so I had to settle for a can of coke and a Mars bar. Oh man, there was some nice food on display as well, but no prices. I don't like that, and when I've only got a scabby fiver, you ain't getting much in a place like that two squid for a can of pot these days isn't it so i've had my mars bar drunk me can of coke and we're now following the derwent river i think it's called and it just leaves all the way on to derwent water so we're not even too far from keswick really obviously we are because this river goes on for quite a while and derwent water itself if it's anything like coniston water that's going to take a fair few hours to walk along there but we'll see same as yesterday no plans for camping out tonight just going to keep walking until the daylight tells me otherwise and then i'll find somewhere to pitch my tent and get a good night's kip and boy am i going to sleep tonight oh i'm feeling tired now and it's only like two in the afternoon or something so we can crack on for another three four hours at least today 
So we should get to Keswick, unless I have quite a lot of breaks between now and then. Don't know. We'll see. We'll see. That rain seems to have eased off. So whenever I get some signal, I've not had no signal for hours, man. Whenever I get some signal, I'm going to check the weather again, see if there's any more rain due. And then I might ditch this waterproof for a bit, because it just gets me too warm. Anyway. Better crack on, eh? Now it's literally just a case of following the path next to Derwent Water until we reach Keswick and then hopefully I'm going to get something to eat when we get there and then straight away find somewhere to pitch. Uh, I've just seen a dead sheep. Not a nice sight to see. Looks like it's got its leg caught between two branches and literally just always oh, starved to death. Poor thing. Anyway, I'm gonna get something to eat when I get to Keswick. I'm gonna wipe this door. It's all steamed up unless it's my glasses. I don't know. So food, Keswick, then find some way to camp. Sick! Balls in! I've just checked my map and I'm on the wrong bloody side of Derwent Water. I don't know how the hell I've managed that. Derwent Water's there. I've been thinking it's that way. But anyway, all roads lead to Keswick. So it doesn't really make a difference. I think it was where I crossed the bridge, clearly crossing the wrong side of Derwent Water. I think I even videoed a, um, a sign that said Keswick. I think that's where I went wrong. But, don't make a difference to me. Still got some epic mountain views in the distance. Just walking under widow makers instead. Bloody windy around here. Now that's a view. Star Wars actually filmed there. With the mountains in background flying over Derwent water. How oh, beautiful is that, eh? Beautiful. Derwent water. Well people, I'm just slowly working my way out of Keswick now. I had a banging fish and chips at a restaurant in Keswick, like a chippy restaurant. Well deserved with that. Well, well, de cool whip, cool whip, yeah. Well deserved with that. Went down a treat. So now I'm just gonna hike for another hour or so and then look for somewhere to pitch. There is some 40 miles per hour gusts forecast. So I really wanna be heading away from these woodlands. I don't know if you can hear the wind now, but yeah, I'm not feeling that. These trees are shaking and I'm in the Lanshan too. So not really one for 
wind, high wind, and no matter what tent you're in, I don't fancy getting a tree snapped on my head. Not tonight, anyway. I would not camp in here if you paid me with these winds. You probably can't see that on GoPro, but they just snap trees everywhere. Widow makers, Aunt Lean and that. We're ready to go at any minute. No, thank you. The sooner I get out of here, the better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The weather is looking grim. Don't want to be seeing him. Easy. That's a drop and a half for that to be heading to when it's about to get dark. We'll be getting head torch out soon at this rate. Skidor house just over that wall. That'll give you an idea of how far I've walked. Right people, well I'm in my tent, got all my warm gear on now, so just chilling out. I couldn't video putting the tent up, I tried at first, but it's just pitch black out there. And to be honest, I ended up hiking for a lot longer than I expected. I just checked my health app and I've done like 31.2 miles or something today. That is mental. I didn't realise how far I'd walked, to be honest. But everywhere that we're just looking for a pitch this last like hour or so when I've been hiking, it were either too rocky or not a flat ground or too boggy. So I just carried on hiking and then I'm pitching a weird place. It's got like a full on wall all the way around me in a perfect circle. But the grass is really short, perfectly flat as well. So it was just made for me. Perfect timing really, because I would definitely ready to pitch my tent and chill out. So I'm going to get an early night tonight. Not going to cook out. After that fish and chips, I'm all right for now. Got a couple of snacks. Just going to watch some of that I've downloaded off Netflix and get an early night, really. So what I'll do is I'll bring you back in the morning and then we can do tomorrow's adventure. And we'll see how far we get towards Carlisle. Looking forward to it. I'm aching, mate. I'm not going to lie, I'm aching. My thighs are killing. I wasn't aching at all while I were walking, but now I've stopped. My thighs are hurting, my calves are hurting, my feet are killing. But we'll see how we feel it morning. I'm sure I'll make some good progress tomorrow, just like we have done today. Right, catch up with you tomorrow. Peace out. In a bit. Well, 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 morning guys. So this is the spot that I meant last night. I'm basically just in a circle. Just a wall built. I don't know if it's built for sheep or what. God knows. But anyway, it is cold this morning. And that tent took a bit of a battering last night, to be honest. Wind were getting up, it looks a bit saggy. 
Right, I'm going to pack this tent away and we'll be on his travels. La Lan Shan 2. Right, thank you for having me. Leave no trace, as always. Oh, even a little doorway. I remember it being really boggy here last night. So I'll have to be careful. Yeah, look at that. That's where I was, inside there. Well, not gonna lie, my feet are hurting a bit this morning. It's one of them where on a night, they don't seem too bad at all, like blisters, very minimal. But then on a morning, wow, killing when you first put your shoes back on and start walking. But we're cracking on, it's really windy out here. I think it's just because I'm in a proper exposed area. Now, the next sort of section is gonna lead me up to High Pike. And that is actually the highest point of the Cumbria Way. So I'm not even sure if it's a mountain. I think it is. If it's over 2,000 feet, it is. So that'll be the highest point. And I don't think it'll be a worm right though. You never know. I'll have a look. But I've had no signal for ages. So I could do with getting some signal so I can just message some people. Let them know I'm all right and that. So I've not spoken to anyone for over you know, about 14 hours or something, or 12 hours. Since whenever I last left um, Keswick yesterday evening, after me chippy, oh mate, that fish and chips, tartar sauce as well. I've never been a tartar tar sauce guy, but I had some on that and it was beautiful. Fresh lemon as well for squeezy squeeze. Can you tell I'm hungry this morning? Starving man. I've got three protein bars left because obviously a five day trip. So I'm going to have one now and then I might have one later on as well. And then obviously when I first get a chance to get some proper breakfast, I will do. So the one that I'm going for for breakfast, protein bar, bow bites again. I love these bow bites. Well, I don't, it's just the only ones I brought with me. Sticky toffee pudding, mate. What a breakfast. Sticky toffee pudding. 20 grams of protein as well. So that should do. That'll be a nice little breakfast, that. Get me moving. Get me up this high pike. So this sort of area at Lake District sort of reminds me of the Peak District with just the rolling hills and not so rugged mountains. Obviously you can tell it's autumn now with all the colours. What's slowing me down a bit this morning is the paths are basically out of rivers because of all rain last night. Well, all rain lately. So it's literally like stepping stones just to get down a path. Obviously that's gonna slow you down. Look. Whoa, nearly slipped. Oh, there's plenty of ascent today. I am feeling it. So at the top of this hill here, there is like a little boffy. I'm not sure if it's exactly a boffy. It's called Lingy Hut. 
So I'm going to check that out when I get up there. This could have been an option for me to stay at last night, actually, this Lingy hut. But it meant doing an extra like four miles on top of the 32 or whatever it was that I already did yesterday. So I wasn't feeling that. Wow. Not sure where the path is here. It sort of splits off. So I'm going to have a quick double check on the map. I know which way I'm heading anyway, roughly. But I don't want to make it any longer than it needs to be. Oh. Bothy could. Oh, well, not much going on in here, is there? Where's my coffee machine and that vending machine? Oh. Definitely sleep in here though, plenty of space. Get your firm rest out on one of these. Please record your visit in the visitor book. I'll do if there's a pen. There's no pen. So that was Lingy Hut. Decent boffy really. Not like I've ever been to a boffy before, so I can't really compare it to others. There were no facilities at all, and it's very small. And by facilities, I mean in some of them there's like uh, oh, a few pans and that, and a bit of chopped up wood, and I don't know. But obviously that's a really small one. That I think it said no more than six people struggle to get six in there unless obviously you're all on the floor anyway it's really windy now and we're heading to the highest point of the Cumbria way so once we get there according to my map it's pretty much downhill all the way obviously there's going to be bits of ascent every now and then but basically on the map it's saying downhill which might be less hard work when I'm huffing and puffing and that but it certainly takes its toll on the knees next stop high pike just up there the highest point oh it looks quite far away from here my days fam Whew. 
Oh, what a difference that makes. In Windbreck, thank God this were up here. That is ruthless. It's a good job I didn't plan on camping up here or out, because I certainly contemplated it when I was plotting the routes. That is unreal out there. It's freezing as well. So we're heading that way. The weather doesn't look too bad, actually. Nice blue skies. But as you can see, there's no more mountains compared to that way. So it's just slowly downhill now for about 25, 26 miles or something. I'm just guessing that, I ain't got a clue around that anyway. So I think next step is to get to Colbeck and hopefully we'll get something to eat and drink. Could do with a nice can of, but we're gonna see a fizzy pop. I actually fancy some fresh orange or something. Fresh orange or fresh apple juice or something like that. Anyway, anything. Let's just get moving. The quicker we get up, the quicker we get out of this wind. You ready? You ready for the difference? Because you're here now. And then I stand up. Straight away. Straight away, man. Right, let's go. Let's go. Tell you summer, it's been a long time since I've seen any of these signs. And it's good to be out of the wind. Just come down from up there. Rolls Royce, mate. That is a beast. What a classic. Right, I've got to Colbeck. Feeling it now, this is the last push all the way to Carlisle. I can't believe I'm gonna have actually done this in three days, which is some achievement really. I'll have definitely walked over 80 miles. I think this is why today my enthusiasm has not been as high. So I've just been focused on getting the job done. Oh mate, I just got some Pringles, man. And a sausage roll as well, it was hot. Hot sausage roll, probably the best sausage roll I've ever had. Shits on any place like Greg's. Well, a last look at the mountainous lake district in the distance. What a slog this time at road is. So Carlisle, next right for us, I think. Right, so I'm really on the final stretch now. I've done the walk from Coldbeck and I'm currently in Dalston just been to co-op again Dalston, Dalston I don't know how you pronounce these places so I've just been to co-op there got some Lucas Aid Sport for this final push and I've made the executive decision for this last few miles to follow the road because I'm hoping to get there before the information centre closes at five o'clock so then I can sign that book so if not I'm not going to be able to sign it so I'm going to get there for five hopefully before five I need to get a shift on if I'm going to make that happen and then I guess I need to start looking at getting a train booked and get my send back to Bradford but we'll see but yeah I'm in pain me if there's one thing that I've learned and that I'll bear in mind for future is don't rush these long, longer distance hikes. So I've done this in three days and my feet weren't prepared for that. I weren't prepared for that. It is what it is. I've carried far too much shit with me as well on this trip because obviously, ideally, it's a five day route. So snacks and that, coffees, energy bars, trail mix. I packed for five days worth. So I've really just been lugging about a load of extra shite for no reason. But you live and learn. I've really enjoyed it though. 
it's been an epic trip a good test of character especially last night hiking in dark and that anyway I'll bring you back when we get closer to Carlisle I feel like the content for this second part has been shite to be honest but that's because I didn't plan on doing it over one day you know this video I thought we were going to stop off tonight and have a wild camp somewhere I don't know near Caldbeck or whatever and then do this last part tomorrow and shorten it from five days to four I've now shortened it from five days to three so you didn't really have much of a wild camp on this video I dread to think what state my feet are going to be in when I get back I'm now getting pain in my left thigh it's numb I think it's cramp or something I don't know but it's worse when I stop if I stop and sit down for a bit getting back up again oh I'm seizing up so this train journey should be fun it's going to take me three hours to get home on train which means hopefully I'll be home for about nine o'clock tonight if I can get train around quarter to six trust me what I'll do is I'll do a gear load out and I'll show you every single item that I brought on this trip and wait till you see how much stuff I didn't need to bring or haven't used it's gone from my video in mountains and that to video in Nest Cafe factory Nestle factory whatever it is mate it's tempting you know it's tempting Tires were flat. It was tempting though, but I don't know what I'd have done with it once I got to Carlisle. Unless I just brought it on train with me back to Bradford. And I got a fiver for it at train station in Bradford for that. <laughs> Pirelli, mate. Pirelli. What has happened to this episode? Eh? What has happened? Garbage. Shite. Turn it off. Just turn it off. Nearly here now, anyway. Last two miles to Carlisle. Right, so despite me trying to do that shortcut to save 15 minutes or whatever it was, I missed it anyway, and it's closed, but it doesn't matter. Still done it, still mission completed. Now I just need to find this train station. Right guys, so I'm at the train station now in Carlisle, so I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I hope you've liked this one. I know this part two hasn't been the greatest content wise, but it's just been one of them. It's been about the hiking for me, getting it done, getting it completed, and we've done it. So I'm buzzing with that. I've really enjoyed it. So if you did like it, make sure you press like, drop a comment, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out in a bit. <laughs>